We have an exclusive interview tonight with Deb Butler because today Democratic State Representative Deb Butler finally had enough from the Republican Speaker of the North Carolina House of Representatives, Tim Moore. And Deb Butler went viral today, letting Tim Moore know exactly how she feels. The Charlotte Observer described what happened in the North Carolina House today as a stunning display of contempt for democracy. Here is the sequence of events as described by the Charlotte Observer. House Speaker Tim Moore called a surprise vote to overturn Democratic Governor Roy Cooper's veto of the state budget just after a session opened at 8.30 a.m. Wednesday. Democratic lawmakers and the media had been told by Republican leaders that there would be no vote in the morning. Enough Republicans aware of the secret plan were there. With only 64 of the House's 120 members present, the vote to override passed 55 to 9. If all Democrats had been present, the vote to override could not have passed because the veto override requires 60% of the votes of the members who are present. In an editorial today, the Charlotte Observer said, not only was the House vote dishonest, it was carried out by a Republican majority that courts have already repeatedly found to have gained seats through illegal gerrymandering. It was an illegitimate majority acting in an unethical way. When Representative Deb Butler rose to object, she was not recognized to speak by the Speaker. Republicans attempted to turn off her microphone. She kept speaking, switching microphones to find one that would work. While Republicans called Capitol Police into the chamber, Democratic colleagues of Deb Butler's surrounded her. In the video you are about to see, you will hear some of them talking about not letting anyone touch her. They were there to protect her as she spoke. The few Democrats who were in that room were going to make sure that Deb Butler got to speak and do what they could to make sure she would not be arrested for exercising her rights as a member of the North Carolina House of Representatives. And luckily, one of Deb Butler's colleagues had the presence of mind to grab a cell phone camera and start recording video. Here's how it began. You shall not do this to, you shall not do this to democracy in North Carolina, Mr. Speaker. How dare you do this, Mr. Speaker? I will not yield. We're not gonna let anybody touch you. I will not yield. Mr. Speaker, I will not yield. There is no. You shall not usurp the process, Mr. Speaker. How dare you subject right. this body to trickery, deceptive practices, hijacking the process? We have been here day and night for months defending what we believe, and you would submit this body? to trickery, deception, deceit. It is so typical of the way you conduct yourself. How dare you, Mr. Speaker? Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Democratic State Representative Deb Butler. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope you still have uh, your voice left so that you can uh, tell us what, what happened there. So where, where were you? What did, how did you discover what was happening on the House floor? Thank you, Lawrence, for having me. I tell you, um, I'm chronically punctual in all things, and so I happened to be there early. I knew there were no votes, but because it was 9-11, I thought, well, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance, the prayer. We'll have some commemorative um, speakers, and um, so I, I just, by sheer luck, was there and um, saw it begin to unfold and was just uh, aghast and uh, tried to intervene as best I could. And, and you, uh, you, you've all known that this could happen if you didn't have enough of your members there at any given time. And, and so you've been kind of steadfastly making sure that you always had enough people there to block any attempt to do this, to override the governor's veto of the budget. What's at stake uh, for you and the Democrats and the governor in the budget? 
You know, Lawrence, North Carolina is a place that um, used to be revered for public education. Our teachers are paid at the very bottom of the barrel in this country. Our water is contaminated because we have not fully funded our Department of Environmental Quality. Um, our schools are crumbling because of a lack of infrastructure. And so, um, and we have the working poor, of course, who have not enjoyed health care because of our failure to expand Medicaid. It's a travesty. And um, Governor Cooper has fought very hard, as have I and all of our colleagues. We have been steadfast. And um, I'm one of the whips in our, in our um, caucus. I have asked people to forego cancer treatments. I have asked them to come after surgery. I have asked them to miss anniversaries and birthday parties and first days of kindergarten. So when I saw the speaker about to rob my colleagues of their hard work, it was more than I could bear. And I think you saw that. Um, it, it was a day that uh, I'll never forget. And I'm totally humiliated that North Carolina has sunk to this level. And uh, again, I will not yield, Lawrence. I will not yield. That was very clear today. And the, the governor speaking earlier uh, on MSNBC uh, said that what they did today was a lie. They, they lied to you about what was going to happen there this morning. Uh, and then they got together uh, basically to, uh, to sneak this one by you all. It's telling, Lawrence, that there was no media in the chamber. We have had a plethora of cameras all day, every day when we're in there. In fact, I'm informed one of the reporters um, has a text message from the, the speaker of the, uh, excuse me, the chairman of the rules committee saying that there would be no votes, hence the absence of media. Uh, and you're right, had my colleague John Acock not caught it on video, it would have gone blithely by and it would have been um, unknown to anyone. And so I'm so thankful he did that because we're trying to sanitize North Carolina with the light of day, call these things into clear focus and uh, do what we can. Were you aware that the Republicans had called in uh, the police, the Capitol Police, and they were approaching you and, and that's why your colleagues were physically surrounding you? I, um, I, I gathered that pretty quickly. Um, I saw them out of the corner of my eye. I heard my other colleague, Candy Smith, say, we're not going to let anybody touch her. Heard someone else say, no, sir, not today. Um, the sergeant at arms was there. He cut my microphone off. In fact, the speaker cut my microphone off from the dais. Um, I, I kept turning it back on and continued to shout. and. Uh, you know, it's a tragic day in North Carolina politics, honestly. Um, we used to be known as the shining star of the South, and now we are a place of scorched earth politics. And um, I am as proud as I can be to be a North Carolina Democrat. We gained 10 seats on them in the midterms, and uh, this has put steel in the spine of every person in my caucus. Um, I cannot tell you the deluge of support I have received um, from Republicans, not the, not the ones on the House floor, but Republicans across North Carolina, independents, people from Indiana, Tennessee, across this country. And um, they're saying to me things like, uh, you said what we're all thinking. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad that it, it turned out that way. And I'm thrilled that I was able to be a part of it. So. You, you did not yield and your voice was heard all over the country. <laughs> North Carolina State Representative Deb Butler, thank you very, very much for joining us tonight on this very difficult day for you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.